Oh, hey. Every day, I get asked the same question. Taylor, you're so funny, cute, and tall. What's in your camera bag? Well, Mom, today, I'll answer that question. Hey friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those that don't know me, I am a photographer and video creator in the Chicagoland area. I've been shooting for over a decade now and I figured why not show you what I would pack with me for a day of shooting. So here's the deal, later today, me and some friends are going to Chicago to do some city shooting. But I don't have one kit that I bring with me to every shoot. It always kind of depends on what I'm shooting and what I need to get the job done. I mean, all these pieces of gear are great, but they're just tools. Super fun tools, but tools. So I'll go over what I decided to take with me today. First up, the bag. Now you've probably never heard of this one before. This is the Nomadic Peter McKinnon. McKinnon, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, camera pack 35 liter. Okay, I know, <laughs> know it's a bit of a staple here on YouTube, but that's for a good reason. It's marketed really well and is a well-built bag that can carry a lot of gear. It's the best large camera bag that I've ever used, but that's not saying a ton as I haven't used a bunch of them personally. But overall, I'm really happy with it and would only consider switching it out for something a little less giant when I don't need everything. The 25 liter looks really cool, especially for all that I would need for lighter days. Uh, I mainly got the 35 liter though for my professional shoots when I need to bring everything with me. So today, this is what we're taking. Second, the tripod. We have got the Ulanzi Zero F38. Now this is a newer pickup for me, but I am super excited about it. I originally wanted the Peak Design tripod uh, for a long time, but after using one from a friend, there are just some things that I really didn't like about it functionally while using it. Uh, so. I tried this one out and super glad that I did. Speaking of Peak Design, on the other side of the bag, I have the Peak Design camera clip. Now it's great for being able to have your camera ready to shoot whenever you're walking around, hiking, traveling. However, if you'll be taking your bag on and off a lot, it's probably better just to use a normal camera strap. I like having it on my bag though, so I can clip it on and go hands-free whenever I want to. All right, now for the good stuff. Let's get inside. editing. All right, first up, cameras. For this type of content where I'm doing both stills and video, I want to kind of play the middle and have something that can perform just as well at both. So what I'm bringing with me today is the Sony a7 IV. This thing is awesome. It can be a powerhouse for video, also great for stills, but really it's kind of my go-to whenever I don't know what I'm going to be doing. If it just had 4K 60 with no crop, it'd be pretty much perfect, but what do you do? Also, I'm bringing with me the Sony A6400 for a lot of the same reasons, really, but mainly so I can compare it to the A7 IV. So there may or may not be a video comparing these two guys coming soon. Both of these cameras have the Falcam F38 camera plates on the bottom. This one specifically is cool because it on one side works with Peak Design, and on the other side works with the F38. So I can throw it on my tripod one way, and then on the Peak Design camera clip the other way. So it's great to be able to use both of those systems and just use one plate for that. All right, next up, lenses. Again, because I don't know exactly what today will look like, I wanna be prepared for most scenarios. So, zooms. I'm bringing the Tamron 17 to 28 F2.8, the Tamron 70 to 180 f 2.8 and the one that'll probably stay on my camera the most the sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 art lens the tamarons are good they're not perfect but it's a good balance between image quality weight savings and cost especially for the amount of times that i use them i'm also going to bring one prime lens it's my favorite focal length especially for family and personal photography which is the sony 35 millimeter uh, f 
FE lens. It's a great lens, I really enjoy it, uh, but again, my favorite focal length. For audio, for on camera, I've got the Rode VideoMic NTG. I haven't used it enough to give it a fair review, but it had a lot of features and specs that impressed me on paper. So on paper, this is an awesome mic. In real life, we'll see, but I'm happy so far. And then for a lav mic, I have the Tentacle Sync Track E recorder and the lav that comes with it. This is a great little recorder. It's got 32-bit float, which is basically like raw recording for audio. Uh, makes it so it's really hard to clip your audio and comes with a pretty sweet app for monitoring and starting and stopping recordings. It has come in handy more than once where I may or may not have forgot to hit record during a live event, uh, but was able to start it right before it started <laughs> from the app and didn't lose any audio. So this one's great. And if you like the audio you're hearing now, that is another tentacle sync. So you can kind of compare that. And then also I have a Tascam DR05X. Really great name, really rolls off the tongue there. Uh, but this one is mainly for environmental audio or if the tentacle sync goes down, I have a mic jack right here I can plug a lob into. And then also have a couple of extra lobs from Rode. And I keep all these in these black mesh bags. Now these are super cheap and super awesome. I think they're technically uh, makeup bags on Amazon, but I'll put a link to all of this down below. But these are great because you can just group things that go together, together, but still see everything in one spot. So I love being able to have these and just kind of group things together, slide them in pockets, slide them in the front. Uh, but that way it can all stay together, but I can see where everything is. All right, next up, I have the GoPro Hero 9 Black. I'm gonna bring this just to get some POV shots and uh, see what we can get when we're in the city. And also, I've got my drone. Drones are an interesting topic, I think because of the cost benefit that you pay. Honestly, for most people, I think drones are a waste of money. They offer a cool perspective, but you'll get way more use out of a lens of similar cost, at least most of the time. I own this DJI Mavic Air, the original one, but only because I got a great deal on it from a close friend. It's not the best drone and it's a bit beat up. Partially my fault. But the amount you pay versus the amount of shots you normally use in a final video is almost always skewed towards drones costing way more than they're worth. Also, they're getting harder and harder to fly in more and more places, putting restrictions on flight and requiring permits along with licensing. And that's all fine. I just don't think the cost is worth it most of the time for most people. Next up, I've got my filters in this filter case from Mindshift. It's the Filter Nest Mini. First, and the one that I use the most is the Freewell Variable ND 2 to 5 stop. For me, this filter offered the best value between price and performance, and it's been really great. I'm really happy with it. Next, I have a circular polarizer from Breakthrough Photography. I use this if I need to cut reflections from glass or water in a shot. And lastly, I have a Tiffin Black Promist uh, one quarter stop. I use this if I wanna get a dreamy look to my footage and uh, kind of bloom the highlights. These are all 82 millimeters, and I suggest for any filter kit to just buy one size filter and adapt all of your lenses to that size using filter rings. I went with 82 because one, it's the size of the largest lens that I own, and two, it's also the largest thread size that most manufacturers make without getting into specialty lenses. My gear will probably be evolving for as long as I'm shooting, so if I ever want to rent a lens or trade out a lens, I will probably be able to adapt it to 82 millimeters. I keep all of my filter rings in this pouch right here. That way I can adapt all of my lenses again from whatever their thread size is up to 82. And the ones that I like are the Lucid brand from Amazon. Not only are these relatively affordable, but they're also 100% brass. And then I have this little tripod here from Manfrotto in case I wanna get a really low angle and also have the Falcam quick release on there. 
So this guy comes in super handy sometimes when I just need something low. My multi-tool of choice. Everybody should have a multi-tool. This one is the Leatherman Surge. I've had this thing forever, uh, but it has everything I need on it in case anything gets stuck or need a screwdriver or anything like that. So I keep that down here. Like I mentioned, the Peak Design camera clip is great for clipping on the camera and going hands-free at any time. But if I do want a strap, I have the Peak Design slide light strap. This is great because it's uh, thick enough for most cameras, but not so thick that you feel like you're wearing a seatbelt. Uh, and so I have the anchors from Peak Design on all of my cameras. So switching between them is super easy and super quick. Next, I have a rocket blower. Everybody should have one of these. Just keep your gear clean. Everything looks better and uh, is way more functional when it's clean. And then last in here, I have the Nanlite Lido Light 5C. It's just a little LED light. Uh, these are great. Aperture makes them, Nanlite makes them, Godox makes them. You can get them from a lot of different manufacturers, but having this in your kit just comes in handy more times than you'd think. So these are great. All right, now to the other side. All right, I have my SD card case from Pelican. It's a little bit more expensive than the cheaper ones, but this is totally worth it. I've tried the cheap ones before and they've literally ripped my SD cards in half because of the type of foam or plastic that they use. This is the only one I found that has this squishy foam and hasn't destroyed my SD cards. So that's worth the extra 10 or $15 for this guy over the cheaper guys. The only thing I wish is that they made these in different brighter colors. So if anybody from Pelican is watching this, please make these in different bright colors. I would pay for that in a heartbeat, but this thing's awesome. Up here, I have a lens pen, so microfiber on one side and a little brush on one side just for cleaning stuff. Always good to keep stuff clean again. And I also have a bunch of these lens wipes in here, Zeiss lens cleaning wipes. One of my friends gave me like a pack of a thousand a couple years ago, so I just keep them kind of everywhere for tech gear, for camera gear, for just about anything, they're great. And in here, I've got another bag that holds all of my SSDs and hard drives. So the one I use is the Samsung T7 for most of my current projects. They all go in here. All right, close this guy up. And on the front, it's where I have all of my batteries. I use the newer batteries for Sony along with the Sony branded ones. I haven't seen any difference between the newer ones and the Sony ones uh, and the the reason I have rubber bands on these is that's my super high-tech system to know when they're fully charged and when they're dead. Obviously, to use them, I have to take the rubber band off. So when they're fully charged, they have a rubber band on them, take it off to use it. And then when they don't have a rubber band, they need to get charged. So that's how I know what's fresh and what's not. And then the last thing, then this isn't in my bag, but this has been huge for keeping me organized. And that is using a label maker. So all of my stuff gets labeled it just makes it super, super nice to know. At a glance, those are my batteries, that's my camera, whatever. And lastly, to edit everything on the go, I have my my 14 inch MacBook Pro from 2020 with the original M1 chip. Originally, I just needed a laptop to edit photos on the go and I knew that this would fit the bill. But as I've used it more and more, I've realized it's more than capable of editing my 4K footage and have since ditched my custom built PC altogether and just edit everything on this. That PC was even water cooled. You can't water cool a laptop. Okay, somebody's done it. Okay, you can water cool a laptop. This unwater cooled laptop, lame, can slow down a bit with heavy motion graphic work, but overall, I'm really happy with it. All right, now that we're all packed, let's go meet up with some friends and hit up Chicago. Just now 
boy fuck right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. I feel like Spider Man right now. Just. <laughs> oh yeah, where well, we all like just whoa yeah. whoa 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 wh